We meet today with County Commission Chairman Jay Morris, who's running for re-election against Merrill Rowland. Um, this, this is the first time I've met with you. I'm sure you've been with the endorsement boards here before. You understand all these are videoed, um, and you know we have we have Greg Crum, Phil Sabatello, our citizen members, Delinda Fogel is on my left, Kathy's over there, and I'm here, and all you can see is Jay. So we usually just begin with letting you introduce yourself and tell us why you want to be doing what you're sitting here trying to do. My wife asked me that same question. <laughs> oh, I thought your wife asked me mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, Jim, it probably has to go back to when I ran in 2010. I had uh, actually retired early. I retired at 57, ran a New York Stock Exchange company. We had bought a vacation home down here about 20 years before that. Our oldest son uh, came down here, went to grad school at the University of North Florida, got married, and we had our second grandchild just about the time that I retired. So it was geared to come down here, and that's it. I had never run for political office before, had no intention of doing it, had been retired for about just about 10 years till 2010, and got in a conversation uh, with someone with reference to um, corporate finances. And then it turned into somehow on county finances and how the county had run up um, the, the finances, but actually this is the same chart that I got from the Office of Management and Budget back in 2010, and how the revenue had run up, um, actually the highest it's ever been, $733 million in, in uh, 2007. And then of course the bottom fell out, as you guys know, in 2008. And I went down to the Office of Management and Budget, that's where I actually got this chart, and I said, just out of interest, you could see the run-up here from 2005 to 2007 was substantial compared to the population increase. And, and all we do is provide services, so that money would be going to provide services to the population increase, which was far smaller than the run-up in the budget. And I had just asked um, back then Jesse Dunn how much the commissioners had put in reserves over that period. And actually, it was basically next to nothing. It, they didn't put anything. They, they basically spent it all, uh, which was totally foreign to me, uh, having run a pretty major corporation, that uh, we put a lot into reserves. And had they put back then of $733 million, our budget for next year is $619 million. So we're nowhere near what it was back in 2007. Had they put $50 million in reserves for deferred maintenance, we would be in great shape right now. And they didn't do it. They bought a, an equestrian center, which I think you know, uh, built the county administration building and, and some other things. So that actually got me interested in saying, well, there's another part too. There, there was a county commissioner had been in for three terms and uh, was involved in this and was going to run again and had picked uh, District 4, which then, before redistricting, was only Ponte Vedra. It was locked in totally Ponte Vedra and uh, didn't live in Ponte Vedra, lived in District 2. Uh, no, I'm sorry, District 5 down here in St. Augustine. And I said, you know what, maybe it's time to pay back to see. Um, I had played a lot of golf in 10 years, and uh, that was getting a little boring. And I said, why not give it a shot? We have no name recognition, not known at all. And, uh, but those are the two reasons to say, I can really think I can help the county financially, and I think I could help the two things I, I ran on. I was kind of like a two-horse pony. I mean, it was just strictly from the financial aspect and then what I could do to help bring business, industry, commercial jobs into St. Johns County. Those are the two things that I ran on. And uh, fortunately enough, it, it paid off and, and it worked and we won. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I don't think, uh, particularly if you have a four-year term, no one should be in there for more than four. Two terms. I mean, I, I think that's enough. You know, let someone else come in and do it. So I decided to run one more time. Uh, this will be it, win or lose. I'm, as my wife said, uh, if you win, you win. If you lose, you win. I mean, either way, uh, it's, it's uh, good. And what I want to do is continue what we've done. We're probably, I don't know how much you want to get into it, we're, we're, if not number one, we're in the top, say, five in just about everything on, going on in, uh, in Florida, county-wise. 
and I can read off some stuff. I pulled some things together from some speeches and things I made. But the county is doing very well right now, extremely well. And I'd like to continue that for the next four years. And then hopefully, uh, if I make it uh, three years from now, try to recruit someone who possibly has retired early, has a good business background, and, and would come and run and take over uh, for, for with me leaving. You know, it, it's amazing. There is, uh, there's no criteria to run for county commissioner. You have to be over 21 and vertical. I mean, that's it. And I would love to get someone that has a good business background, uh, knows finances, uh, my master's degree is in finance, and, and knows accounting, and knows how to run things, has actually made a payroll, has actually signed a check on the front rather than the back of a paycheck. And I don't know, uh, you probably have the background but at 35, we took a very small $50 million NASDAQ company and made it a multi-billion dollar New York Stock Exchange company. So, and, and to me, the, running the county is, is basically like running a business. A little different. We have the profit motive there. You want to increase shareholder value. Here you provide services to citizens. But it's the same thing. You know, you've got over a $600 million budget. And it's, it's, it's like running a corporation. So those are the reasons and the same reasons that I ran really uh, four years ago, to do it four, four more years and then let someone else take over for it. Okay. Let me ask you something to just sort of get this out of the way. You're in a red-hot race with Merrill Rowland. I just wonder how you keep it positive. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> have, uh, it, it almost seems like a not. Have you, has, has your opponent shown up at, at any function that you've been to? Other than, no. other than well, no, the no, I, no, I can't say that. The only, <clears throat> the only function that he came to, we had a debate down at the River House. Um, I'm trying to think it was in a, a business executive group, young, young uh, business executives to put that on. And he was not on. He didn't come in for the debate. But they let him at the end speak for five minutes. And that's the only thing that I can think of. I think we had like eight separate debates and everything else that we've done for eight to nine months to run. That's the only thing I can remember he was at. So have, have you been campaigning like less strenuously? I mean, I know you've been out there, but it, it's an odd situation. I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. We have not been able to make contact um, with him at all. Okay. So um, it might change the dynamics of, what, of what's going on here. But, but I just want to be sure that, that, that he was not on the campaign trail, rather than just not around here. So. I, I, I have beyond that. I have not <clears throat> seen him. I, I plan on really no debates with him. You know, as I said, I think people are sick of me. They, they saw me for eight months. We were out everywhere, every Republican meeting, whether it's St. Augustine, Ponte Vedra. Uh, we put on, I believe, around eight debates. Uh, I'm going to be up at the Republican Club next month. They're going to have all the candidates up there to, it's not going to be a debate, to just speak for about five minutes. And I'm going to get it on and off very quickly, uh, indicating you've probably heard everything you want to hear up from me. You know my background. Uh, you know, I have a record. You know that. Uh, I'm going to chastise the Republican, not so much the Republican Party in Ponte Vedra, but anybody around to push on. Ponte Vedra only brought out 9% of the vote, it's which I just, I just could not yeah. believe. No. I mean, you know, when you got 91% of the people didn't vote in Ponte Vedra, that's a disgrace. Uh -huh. So I'm going to probably talk more about that than anything else that uh, that I'm doing. But no, no, I I have met Merrill Rowland. I don't really know him. I know his background, uh, but I have not really run into him. Okay. We I, had a we had a meet and greet in uh, Marsh Landing that was put on by the Marsh Landing community, where they they invited everybody. State Ron DeSantis was there. Mer he was he was invited because his name tag was right next to mine at the podium. He didn't show up. Okay, I'm going to write for a while. Phyllis, I know you're. Well, there uh, there was one other meeting that he was at that I was at, and you were there, but it wasn't a debate. It was just a introduction and everything. And at that meeting, they <coughs> allowed him to speak for five minutes. That's all. Okay, I don't Gave remember that time. one. That was up in the Northwest. Okay. And um, I think it was at the, I think it was at the Annex, I'm not sure. Um, but it was, you know, not a meeting where he spoke also. So. Okay, I'll 
jump in here with a question. Okay. Um, how are we going to balance the budget with the quality of life that we have now? How are you going to continue as a county if you're reelected to give us the services that we're used to? Well, the budget is balanced. By state mandate, we have to balance the budget, Kathy, as you know. And it will be as we just finalized the budget this month. So it's going to be balanced again um, in 2015. My deal, and I get criticized by it from, from one of the competitors I ran again in, in the regular Republican election, we're going to start to grow our way out of this. And, and I gave a, a kind of a key example. And I was told you can't grow your way out. I said I've done it all my life, taking a $50 million company and making it $2, two billion. We had 750 employees when I took it over. We had over 7,500 when I left. So you can grow your way in a corporation. You can grow your way in a county. Look where it was at $733 million in 2007. Uh, I, I think what you're going to see, and, and this is a good example. I used it in a debate and I used it in a speech. When we had our, our uh, public, um, and you guys probably had someone there, the three-day budget meetings was May, I think, like 13th, 14th, and 15th. The original budget that came out of that was $607 million. Very preliminary, but that was the original estimate. When all the county departments uh, came forward, that's what they gave. Then on July 19th, July 19th, July 29th, we came back with another kind of a workshop. It was a public meeting. And the budget had gone from 607 to 612. So we'd gone up $5 million in, in uh, two months. And I said, you watch, before we finalize this on September 3rd, this budget is going to, only a month later, this budget will go up another $5 million. It didn't go up $5 million, it went up $7 million to 619. Now, some of that is carryover, but everybody pretty well has the carryover, capital expenditure carryover, into the next year pretty well down. And, and the balance of that was, was the growth. And I think you're going to see that. We've gotten, and I can read some of the names off if you want it. Uh, we've cut the unemployment rate almost in half over the last three and a half, four years. Uh, we are rated by CNN and Mon Money Magazine. St. John's County is number five in the nation, not the state, the nation for job creation. And that is really starting to pay off now in, in that category, where we really had not much at all growth really 2011 through 2012, it is now starting to kick in, and we're getting business and industry. You're getting Northrop Grumman going to add 400 jobs here, which is huge, high-paid jobs, higher than normal average. And that, you're going you're gonna to see this county, as the year goes on, that, that growth is going to continue. It's going to go. And we're still a long way. I mean, if you take it, we've cut the budget, what, $128 million? or 18% since uh, 2007, but we still could grow 20% and just be back where we were in 2007. So we've got a lot of opportunity to grow this thing. Uh, I am not looking to raise taxes. Um, Mike Wanchek and I have had a lot of conversations with reference to the sales tax. Matter of fact, we've talked about that for about three and a half months, uh, months, years, with reference to the sales tax. But I, I think you're going to see this continue to grow. And th there's no cutting. We haven't cut any services for next year at all. There's Nothing's been cut. So, But that's the key. The county provides services. That's basically beyond health, safety, and welfare, which, which is huge. We provide services. And uh, the budget is balanced. The biggest thing we've got to do now with this revenue that's going to come in is cut back at deferred maintenance. We've got about $25 million in deferred maintenance. We've got to continue to chip at. Um, and, and that's what we're going to do. What about the economic development and the recruitment of new businesses? Because you mentioned earlier that that was one of the things that you ran on in the first. Mm -hmm. So what's the latest and greatest? Like Jacksonville just got GE last week, 400 jobs, 50K mm -hmm. salaries. What's our next big thing? I know you don't want to say it, but what do we have in the hopper? Well, well the biggest thing that's taken place, as I said, is Northrop, that, that 400 jobs. We don't have a GE right now coming, but if, but if you chip away at this, and, and again, this is in, in Delinda Ewart, that speech that I gave at the at downtown St. Augustine, you looked at, we just, I was just at the opening of the new regional headquarters for D.R. Horton. That was about six weeks ago or so. 
There's 270 jobs, 2G Synergy headquarters and plant, 125 jobs. Advanced disposal, as you know, just came down about six months ago from Duval County, 120 jobs, Memorial Hospital, 35, Bass Pro Shops, and they will be coming here once, you know, we get 9B through. That'll be a minimum of 250 jobs. You know Lowe's coming in, that's 125 jobs. Uh, the Small Business Development Center that is here in the permitting center of, uh, of St. John's County that Ken Bryan actually did. He, he's responsible for that. They brought in 250 jobs. Northrop, we talked about 400. Ideal Aluminum Defense Shield, which was one of our first guys when we brought uh, Rick Scott in three years ago at the Players Club for that deal. The first one I worked on was Defense Shield, and we got them talked out of coming down from Syracuse. I said, why would you want to live in Syracuse? I mean, I, and, and they agreed. Um, so we're going to, we're not going to get, there's not a lot of Northrop Grumman's where you can get 400 in one shot, and, and, but if you continue to chip away at this, Ideal Aluminum is now located down here. So that's what we're going to keep doing. And um, we've got, uh, when I joined, we didn't even have anybody, there was no economic development department. And I, I talked to Mike about it, and I said, how can, how can you do that? They relied pretty much on the chamber. And I'll be honest, back then, the chamber and the county really didn't talk to each other four years ago. Um, and, and I'm not saying who's responsible for that one way or the other. The chamber has had 100, about 100% 100 turnover in management there, and the county and the chamber really look, work close together. And then Melissa was kind of that catalyst. She sits in on their board meetings. Um, they sit in on anything she's involved with, the IDA, things like that. So the combination has worked very well. And that's where we're going to continue to build this up. I mean, we've got, we're the fourth lowest in the state for unemployment. And, and that didn't just happen. It happened by getting these companies in here and getting, and, and again, you've got, you've got a lot of pluses. Number one, which uh, we can't take credit for, it's Joe Joyner, the school system. I mean, people come here, number one, for the school system. And second, we're the second lowest tax rate in the state of Florida. For all we have here, we're the second lowest. We're 58% lower than Duval County. If, if you're going to come and you want to live here, and, and, you know, why not come to St. John's County? I mean, where else can it be? But 42 miles of Prestine Beach. Um, and as they say, the rest is history in, in the tax rate. The county's tax rate is actually lower than the St. Augustine city tax, which is hard to believe. So you get a lot of bang for the buck here in St. John's County. But that's a long way to say we're going to grow this thing. Continue to grow it. It's growing right now. I have a question. Um, where in the Northwest do you intend to put any commercial development? It seems that it's all taken up with uh, homes and the people there um, really want some commercial development. But where would you put it? Phyllis, at this point, the closest coming to you guys was D.R. Horton. We haven't had yes. any, anything, no, but it's like, you know, 125 jobs. We haven't had anything that I can think of in the Northwest that has come through here, and this thing's just kicked in like the last 18 months. Um, that has come through with reference to industrial, uh, commercial. Um, the next big in, in that, which is, is going to be retail, where the uh, Gate Petroleum site is, mm -hmm. you can consider that, it's, you can consider that north, northwest. When, when that goes in and the Bass Pro Shop, that'll be huge. I didn't realize that that site is like five or six times bigger than St. John's County Town Center. Mm -hmm. It is going to be, it'll be huge when that goes in. That would be wonderful mm -hmm. because that is a big bone of contention for the people in the Northwest. Um, and I know that there was a lot talked about with the commissioners that they're going to concentrate on that. But it seems that there are also a lot of housing developments being approved. Just recently, yeah. Yes. And um, why is that? I mean, just because they're there or just because they apply or? No, quite a, quite a few of them had had been approved previously, and then when the bottom fell out, they stopped. They just, and, and that that's what will happen. Someone asked me with reference to um, uh, the, um, 
Sawgrass Shopping Center was a big deal up there, phase two. And, and I said, if the economy, you can get it approved, but if the economy isn't going anywhere, like it fell out in 2008, it's going to stop. They're not going to, they're business people. They're not going to put the money in it. Once the economy comes back, they will move pretty quickly. And I think that's what you will see with, with developments that are coming in and slash commercial industrial coming in. They see the economy picking up. Uh, the last quarter was what? 4.45 percent. I mean, we haven't had that in years. You will see these developments move quick. You get a drop off again, they're going to stop. I mean, you you look what Nakatee did, and Nakatee was in, and then boom. I talked to Roger Olstein. Uh, I had an interview with him in 2010, and uh, he was crying the blue. I mean, they stopped, and you know, you're not going to put. Look at all the money they put in roads and landscaping and everything there. Now they're the what the third fastest growing development in the nation and, and they're moving so fast they're they sold i think a little over 900 lots homes last year but they weren't doing anything four years ago and that's what's going to be the key to it this economy goes these guys are business people they're put their money in and you'll see this thing take off if you're re-elected jay what are your top two um, initiatives over the next four years same thing. It, it's to keep county, you guys run a very successful business. If you're not financially sound, you're not going to go anywhere. It's to keep this county strong financially and, and to get business into St. John's County. We've got to, uh, four years ago, the breakout of a business tax rate to, to us, taxpayers, it was, um, it was 10% to 90%. Duval County's 30%. Uh, and it had never moved. It had never gone above that. Right now, it's 13%. We've only gone up basically 3%. That's certainly not good enough, but it's going in the right direction for the first time. And those same two things that I ran on, what I want to try to keep going you know, this time, to keep continue to build that up, and then hopefully turn it over to someone else that we're doing substantially better than we're doing now, right now. Because it was down in 2010. I mean, there were a lot of people crying the blues back then. But if we can keep where we are financially, from an operational standpoint, we're probably one of the strongest counties in, the, in I was going to say the nation, maybe the nation, in, in uh, Florida. And now we've got to chip away at the deferred maintenance, which, sadly enough, that's what happened. If, if you're running into a corporation and the bottom falls out, it's not smart. The first thing they cut out is advertising. You just cut out advertising. That's, that's first on the list. Here it's maintenance. Now well, corporations cut out maintenance too, but they stop. You know, it's road and bridge, buildings, and that type of thing. And that's what we got to build back up, and we're doing that. Do we have a priority list established for to attack that? Oh yeah, we we had we had actually two public meetings on that, and if you want, I can get you that from uh, Mike. We had two. We may have had three public meetings where they established all the criteria from every department for capital expenditure requests. And if you're like any department head, you're going to ask for twice what you think you're going to get, and then when they cut you back, you're where you want to be. But he's got that entire list of everything that's on there from, uh, well, the biggest was, was uh, Neil Shrinkery, Road and Bridge. But, it, but it's everybody. The fire department needs fire stations. I mean, everybody put their list out, and there is a priority list of that. If, if you did all of it, you're into the, I don't know, trying to remember what it was like 150 million. I mean, it's, it's substantial, but you've got to take the priority portion of it. And it's it, maintenance is what it is right now for that. Commissioner, about two months ago, there was a big meeting with PZA and the PGA mm -hmm. where they were asking them yeah. for, a, I, I don't know what to call them other than pre-approved sort of open-ended zoning requests. Yep. It was, we don't know what we're going to do, but but we just want your okay to do whatever it is we kind of want to do. Um, <clears throat> I know that's got to come back to the commission. Where do you think that's going to go? I mean, it, I, I was personally very surprised that the PZA passed that after every one of them said that it was un, unparalleled and never done and, mm -hmm. and, and would set a precedent for other developers in the county. So now it comes back to the county, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's funny you ask that. I've been on that for about, ever since that took place two months ago. I, I know... Uh, the, the PZA very well. Um, uh, matter of fact, was on the phone with Vernon Kelly yesterday on it. It wasn't, Jim, it wasn't unprecedented. They asked for nine waivers. The, uh, 
the Sawgrass, phase two of the Sawgrass Shopping Center asked for 18 waivers. Nakati asked for 28 waivers. So it, it wasn't unprecedented. But it, sure they didn't spell what they wanted out. And it was, a, yeah, it was the chairman of the PZA who called it, quote, unprecedented. Uh, yeah, but from the number of waivers, it wasn't. But no, anyway, sure. we went back. We're down to two items now. We went back, and everybody was concerned. This thing was approved in 2000, uh, no, 19, uh, 1980. It, it was approved back then. Matter of fact, in that uh, acreage that the PZA owns, they can build 100-foot story buildings throughout the entire the entire area, they can put up 100-story buildings. Um, so that's already approved. They were planning one office building to be, um, I say 100-story, 10-story, uh, 100 feet building, and they want, wanted to put their own office building. I don't know if you've seen the office buildings they rent, the really old buildings in the Shawgrass shopping, shopping Center. They're not great at all. So, but they want to consolidate. They want to bring all their people together. So that's what I think they're going to do. And everybody went crazy over the 10-story building, 100 foot. And, um, but that was pre-approved. So we went back. We've been working behind the scenes. And I'm going to ask, since I'm at a newspaper, don't print any of this because this is draft form. And I want to get it solidified and done to pr present it and then come back. We got them to agree to go no higher than what the Marriott is or, or the uh, Hilton Garden Inn, which is about 75 feet. So they have agreed they won't do their building higher than that. Um, the second thing, um, what was, oh, the second thing, that they wanted to have a uh, entry feature, you know, like you have at Palencia <coughs> and the World Golf Village. And that was supposed to be 50 feet. We got them to take that down to 35. Which is, I think that's even lower what Palencia is. So they've reduced that. Um, they wanted to have the buildings were originally going to be, they could start 150 feet from the road. They've now moved it back to 300 feet. They, they are easy to work with. I mean, I've known them for four years. What this will end up, and I got criticized at the coalition meeting of saying it, once they're done, the quality of what they will put in will be 10 times higher than what the county would have required. This is their, this is their jewel up there. This is their, you know, the goose that laid the golden egg. And they're going to have this entrance and all this going. It'll actually turn out to be a Ponte Vedra's uh, town center. When that is done, that'll be Ponte Vedra's town center, which we don't have a town center right now. And they are not going to screw that up. I mean, they're the most... Don't, no, oh, this is on tape, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want, well, I've told them that. They're the most profit. They're the most profitable nonprofit I've ever known in my life. They are gonna. This thing will be, and and we're down to two final items. And I didn't talk to Mike about it this morning. I, I wasn't realizing that was going to come up here. We're down to two final items with them. I made this presentation to the coalition. Um, Wednesday, their meeting was last Wednesday. Oh, the other big thing they had was what they call that, the bubble plan where you put out, they didn't actually have a bubble plan then. They now have a bubble plan. Uh, it's far better than what was given at the, uh, the uh, Ponte Vedra shopping center. They're, they're gonna have five separate areas. They've laid out exact where the, where the office building will be and or slash a five star hotel, but I doubt it. they'll do that. Uh, they put where retail is going to be on, on the north side and on the south side of the property because the property all backs up onto their property under the golf course. Mm -hmm. There are going to be very high-end condominiums there. They, they show where that is. They show where the retail is. Um, so they have done in a little over a month just about everything they were asked to do and we're down to two final things. They're supposed to show a prototype of the uh, the entrance hall, or give us some uh, photographs of entrance hall type that has been done, and it could be that. Uh, whether they'll get a graphic arts guy to design it or not, I don't know, but they can give us some ideas. I, I don't think the issue is whether whether the P, PGA is going to do a first class thing, but the issue to me and to a lot of people is is the way they asked for it, and there were also wasn't just building heights, and the building heights 
were 100 at the center, they were they, they were dropped down to nothing. They dropped the down to 45, and they asked 55, for no, and, and they asked to be wavered from environmental oversight on the property. He, so, the, so what I'm saying is this is this is not this is not about the PZA. This is should the PZA or the county is the county commission going to allow this sort of yes, we trust you. We won't oversee the environmental issues. We won't oversee all these other yeah, that, issues. That, Jim, that's that's not what they asked to do. Again, I've worked with them for four years. They don't move. They are they are very slow in making decision and moving. We got a commitment um, actually three years ago. Uh, the park group set aside 55 acres for another Davis Park there, and and the PGA will at some point. It's going to cost about four and a half million dollars to build it. They will build it. They've committed to doing that verbally. They've committed to doing that because they want out of the out of the 52 weeks. They want three weeks for parking. Evidently, there's a surface you can put on this thing, and they can park there. And actually, with now the 210 overpass and everything, they will shuttle uh, in, and they're going to need that. They they didn't happen this year because they they put in if you had four people or more in a car, you got free parking. A year ago, they didn't have that, and that place got closed down on Friday and Saturday. So they need the parking. They will put that parking lot in. They have the money to do it. It's just getting them to move. On the environmental, they're going to. They have to. Do, they can't. Cannot not do the environmental before they do any building. But the environmental, it'll cost them thousands and thousands of dollars for the environmental. That runs out after five years. If you don't then move forward and build, at the end of five years it runs out, and you then have to do it again, which is, which is my deal, is they're not going to do this in five years. So th they can't get out of the environmental. They have to do the environmental. But their point was basically, uh, and having worked with them a lot, I don't think they're going to do it in five years. I believe they don't think they're going to do it in five years. And if they don't, then they have to spend all that money all over again. But they're going to have to do the environmental. And that's one of the other things. But they have to do it. It's just they didn't want to be billed twice for it. But the environmental think, will be done. I think what Jim's asking and a lot of our readers have asked is something was approved sight unseen without all these regulations. It's like nobody knew. And you're saying they're going to do it, but it was approved without all of that hashed out. Yeah, it's I like P PZA said, rubber stamp, whatever you want to do, let us know later. And that's not really transparent. No. Isn't that what we're talking about? You need to get someone from the PZA in here. I didn't vote on that. Yeah. No. My, my deal is to, what happened is to go back now and work with them and correct it. Mm -hmm. Go in, not in the limelight of cameras and newspapers and everything else. Just go in and sit down with them one on one and go through each one of those waivers and say, what do we need to do to correct this to make sure the county, I know they're going to do an excellent job. I, I got accused of, uh, uh, what was the term used? Trust me. I said, right. I said, I trust them. I'm not asking, I'm telling you, I trust them. They will do what they say they're going to do. So now we've gone back, and, and your biggest critic, in that has been the Ponte Vedra Coalition, by far. That's, I got my head ripped off there a month ago. I gave the same presentation that I'm telling you about last Wednesday, and everybody but one person was very satisfied of, of what we're doing. But we're doing it with them individually and say, okay, we have a problem, waiver one. What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to take the building height down, no higher than the Marriott. Can't complain. The Marriott's already there, okay? All right, number two, um, we're going to do the setback. 150, we'll do 300 feet. Number three, we haven't gotten it yet, but we need a, a kind of a sketch or something of what you're talking about on the uh, entranceway. And, and the biggest thing everybody complained about was the bubble plan. I've got it back in my office. <clears throat> if I had known we were going to get into this, I'd have brought it down here. They have done a full color plan of showing exactly, they even named the different um, areas. There's there's six areas, and, and they show area one. One's called the wedge. That's where the office building and everything's going to be. That's the entrance that goes right into the golf course. And then they show where the um, uh, residential is going to be. Then they show where the commercial is going to be. All of that. So they've gone before any bubble plan that I've seen in four years. But we're just knocking them off one at a time, and we've got two left to do. 
I think uh, the biggest part, and I know I was going to speak uh, in front of the, uh, the commission uh, before when this comes up uh, for the Northwest Coalition, and that's the fact that the impression that people were given was, well, if you're a good guy, and if they think you're a good guy, you get what you want. But if they don't know you, then prove it. And that just doesn't cut it for people. No, I'll tell you that what. That is wrong. I'd rather, I'd rather take the, uh, well, we're not doing that, but I would rather take uh, the Players Club than a developer from South Miami coming up here to try to do something like that. They're going to, this is where they are. They live in this community. I mean, this is their home. This is where they make all their money. I mean, that you know Vernon Kelly. Yeah. He he's the greatest guy in the world. Uh, he tried to get up and explain it a month ago. What the coalition was called a liar. I'm going. Vernon Kelly is probably an nice. He built the Players Club, and and just try didn't even defend himself. He just said, if that's what you think, that's what you think. But. No, we'll, we'll have all those waivers will be spelled out. Waivers are not an exception. They're, you know, as I just mentioned, too, that were higher than they were. And, and we'll get, I, I even said, and we'll see how it works out, if we can't get the last one, then let's just go ahead and pull it because you're going to have to provide that information when you come in and show the rendering of the buildings and everything anyway. I, but still the point is, is the way the PZA stated it, and that's what people are objecting to, um, is the fact that if you have the reputation or people think you live in the community, you're a real good guy. And let's face it, people have been taken advantage of good guys or not good guys. And it's the job of the PCA to not make comments like that, but to judge it for what they're presenting. And they really didn't do it. Why was that that meeting? Their verbiage was not good. No, I mean, I, I can't. Terrible. I didn't make those comments, so no, I can't defend those know. comments. You can talk to Brad Nelson and, mm -hmm. and that group. Uh, I think what they are trying to say is they've been great citizens, and, and they have been. You you look at you look at the the, the players club. Remember the the clubhouse they tore down to build the new seventy seven thousand square foot. I'm going. You're going to tear this club. I said, yeah, it's not as nice as what it should be. And so they worked with the county, and we fast-tracked it. Actually, we got it built in 11 months, which was unheard of. But I'm looking, if, if they're going to spend that money tearing down a gorgeous clubhouse to put the one up they have now, they are not going to scrimp on what they're going to do there. And we're chipping away at the things that everybody, not everybody, the only, the only people I heard from was from the coalition, that, that, that were complained about. And, and, you know, we had Mary Conkey at the meeting last week. We had uh, Dan McDonald, and I had talked to Dan previously and, and uh, told him about what the bubble plan was. It, but that's how you've got to do it. You've got to get with them individually, get out of the heat of conversation of, of the, uh, you know, the peasants with pitchforks at the door and, and work it out, and that's what we're doing. And I think we're going to get the other. Well, they were scheduled to go. At, at a planning and zone, uh, not planning, uh, our board meeting two weeks later. I mean, they were on the docket to be on two weeks later, and we stopped that. I said, we don't, it's not, we moved it back almost two months to get this thing worked out. And they said, fine, we'll, we'll do that. So, yeah, it would have been on last month. It's not on until the third Tuesday of next month. So, we are doing that and hopefully get the last couple worked out. Okay. Where are you going to eat? Well, uh, it's a little bit out of order. <coughs> it goes back to what we've talked about before, uh, a little bit, which is economic development. And mm -hmm. from a businessman's perspective, what do you see as being the major things that have kept businesses coming from Jacksonville down to St. Augustine? We certainly right now are, you know, we're housing most of the businesses in Jacksonville, not most, but a good number of uh, employees in Jacksonville mm -hmm. reside in St. John's County because of the schools, because of the taxes, because of the new homes, the new developments. But something has prevented some of those businesses from moving their headquarters south. And my wife, actually, she you know, commuted to Jacksonville for six years because they just paid twice as much there in a, in a salary position as you can get here in St. Augustine. St. Augustine proper, of course, not. 
what would you feel would be the things that are hindering it? And of course, you know, I've always heard and always felt that, uh, and it has been somewhat addressed, the impact fees is something that mm -hmm. slows things down a little bit. But what else? Yeah, Greg, the, the biggest thing is lack of existing space. Mm -hmm. They want to move into something. We don't have existing space. Ideal Aluminum took over the building. It, it was actually Ideal Fence or something, uh, which had been up, not abandoned. It would, you know, it was, it, they were gone. As soon as they found that existing building, they jumped at it. The, the biggest thing is we don't. This economy is coming back, but it isn't coming back to the point that uh, contractors are going to build <coughs> spec buildings. If we had, you know, if, if you build it, they will come. That's exactly what it is. If we had the building space, we could, we could double what I just read here. We just don't have the building space. We've got the land, but you've got to build. You can't move in right away. Um, that's, that's the biggest part of it. I don't know that what they pay in Duval County salary wise what you know what we do I know what the average is that that probably would be part of it too if you can if you can make 40 percent more in Duval County you'll probably go there to work than here but the biggest thing of getting people in in into St. John's County is the lack of space the uh, you know 2G Synergy went out on Industrial Boulevard because the building was there that's the first place they opened up their headquarters in Germany but we got them because the building was there. So in the county's five-year plan, where are spec buildings on that list? It, well, we can't do spec buildings. You, you've got to talk contractors in to seeing that the economy's coming back and that they know um, my son is a uh, uh, home builder here in, in Ponte Vedra. Um, we did probably, oh, I don't know, we probably did at least not me, I, I funded it. We did probably, he's built probably 18 homes in the plantation. Probably 10 of those were spec houses. We'd put them up, they were halfway done and they sold. I haven't done a spec house since probably 2006. It, it's it's going to be the economy coming in and you get commercial builders. But part of our economic development strategy should be Melissa and her group going out and selling that. Well, of course, you know, well, a lot of times there's build-a-suit where right. the mm -hmm. land will yeah. build-a-suit mm -hmm. because they want to get the facility that fits their needs, for instance, a newspaper, you know, would typically need a place to print. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not always the case. Sometimes you want to have the company come down here, like a ring power did, mm -hmm. and build their own facility here mm -hmm. locally. But, you know, I've heard in the past that the impact fees were exorbitant, and that did cause some to look at under, into other counties. Yeah. I know that that's been addressed and lowered to a degree. We cut, it in ha we cut them in half. And it did increase somewhat for residential. Yeah, residential stayed the same. Yeah. But, but we cut... Like they may have with the school deal. Home. They didn't with us. But, uh, and we cut the, the commercial in half. Which, Greg, you're right. That helped quite a bit. Um, we're talking to... Um, is this, this isn't going to be televised, or is it? Yeah, you're on tape. <laughs> yeah, I better, I better. We're talking to a very big company in uh, in um, Duval right now. Huge. Great. I, I know the number two guy. Uh, he lives right up on Ponte Vedra Boulevard. We've become very good friends. He would love to move and, and come into St. John's County. And if we can get either what you just said, agree, have him agree to build a suit, or um, what would have been the the, uh, the building where advanced disposal went into? It. That would have been great. They have two more sites right there to build two more exactly the same building. That would be huge if we could get someone talked into doing that up there. Uh, it would be very nice to see some some higher paying jobs, some better salaries. You know, right now right. the biggest employer, of course, is the county, it seems like, the school district. Hospital. Uh, and the hospital. Hospital's so big, yeah. We're a big mm -hmm. personal services economy here, so having a bigger sponsor would be great. Somebody to invest back in the community. And I, I'm happy to hear that you're working on that. Is there a, a, a big budget, a big organization at the county level? I don't know much about the economic development department. One person. One person. Melissa Glasgow, but three years ago we didn't have anybody. Right. 
And have you met her? I have not. You, you ought to take the time and maybe yeah. go out to, she is sharp. She's okay. We got her out of Texas where they do a lot of this stuff and they right. do it very well. She is outstanding. And, and that's what I said, how can you promote this? And we don't even have anybody from the county side doing it. She spends eight days a week doing this. I mean, she is really, really good. Good. Yeah. Do, do give her a call and, and just even go up and sit down with her for an hour okay. because she she is phenomenal and the, the coordination with the chamber has just been unbelievable the turnaround that's taken place there the other thing that i heard um, was that uh, the county doesn't give any incentives i, I know uh, one family that wanted to build a warehouse here and could have been brought bring jobs here but the county, according to them, wouldn't do anything to help them or, and this was at a time when it was very difficult bringing business here. They were just set to relocate here. And they ended up building in Duval because of incentives in there. Phil, how long ago was that? Um, it was about five years. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have you go with Greg and sit down with Melissa. <laughs> she has a whole incentive schedule. She that, does, oh, right? yeah. No, no. Okay. We do give incentives, and it's based on a point system. And if you get up, I believe her deal is if you get up to five points, you get the maximum incentive. No, no. We give incentives. And what is the maximum? What, what incentive is that? I can't put a dollar amount on that. It's based on... The number of employees they're going to bring in, what the pay scale of the, the higher the pay scale, the more the points go up, um, how much the size of the building, the uh, <clears throat> amount of economic development. She's got a whole, she can give you the whole thing. It's like a three page deal. And they just go down and they, and the, and the incentives are not prepaid. They have to produce what they say they're going to do before the incentive kicks in. But that's all her, she, she, did that. That's her baby. She has done a great job with that. And the county, the county, well, I mean, when you're saying we're not, not doing enough, not long ago, everybody's saying the county's giving everything, oh, giving, giving the farm away. Yeah. You know, no, we'll we're not doing that, that. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying there were times when these, yes. these incentives were given and then nobody brought in or they, they brought their own people in or they yeah. did really low in. But now the way it's set up under Melissa, the, the, they have to prove that if they don't have 500 employees, yeah, their they, stuff goes yeah, back they don't get it until do, it produces. If they don't perform, they don't get the incentives. I think it's a great mm -hmm. thing they're doing. But that's all Melissa's deal. I mean, she did the whole, she turned this whole thing around. That's she wonderful. did a great job. Yeah. One more thing that I want to get to, it was, it's interesting because we were talking about building to suit and that the county can't get into it, but the county was getting ready to get into it with the vet's clinic and build a $5 million clinic for that. Mm -hmm. Where, where are you on all that? I mean, I, I understand now from Jerry Cameron from Friday night when I talked to him, he said that once he sent a letter and said that the door's closed on it, it's too late, but is it? No, I haven't seen that letter. Okay. Um, I haven't seen it. Did I you get out of the vets meeting that we had down here at the Elks Club? Yes. I'm a veteran, and, and I know the VA very well. I, I am just so discouraged with the way this thing is being run. Um, you know, not, lo not you, the local guys. You're talking about the, oh, the no, Gainesville. Well, yeah, I'm talking about federal, okay. state. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. when a guy when a guy was in Vietnam, when a guy from Vietnam waits in line and can't get in and dies before he gets in there, that's that's inexcusable. Mm -hmm. Jerry can't. Well, you know, Jerry's been working on this since 2011 on to get to get them to get this squared away. We've got, what, 22,000 vets, over 5,000 use the, the VA hospital. Um, these guys, they didn't have any authority to do anything. I mean, it was just, look at what we're doing for you lately. And you, you look at that and you go and you say, here you're in this dilapidated building that could blow down if a big wind comes up. We're gonna build you a brand new building it's going to be far more efficient, and we're going to rent it to you for the same amount of money that you are paying now in the old Health and Human Services building. And they turn that, it'll be built to spec. We'll build it to spec. And you turn that down. Now you tell me what kind of business guy would, would do that ever. 
I didn't. I haven't heard the door's been shut. These people, as I said, Jerry's been on it for closed, four years. Say it was even well, they, so they were trying. No way to actually physically. They had to keep the contract. They had to continue the contractors on the site to be able to build it when they needed it. The last letter I saw was from, it was from Jerry just ripping into them about number one where the vets live. They they were totally wrong on that, and he showed them that. And the other was on the floodplain. They are totally wrong on that. We've been, in, we've been in touch with Ron DeSantis, Marco Rubio, um, Nelson. Yeah, Nelson. Uh, Democrat people block, I block the name, I can't think. Of. Yeah, Nelson. <laughs> and, and all of them have, have written and, and done, and they, they won't do anything. I mean, I would have never come down to that meeting at the Elks Club not having the right answer that this is and what we're going to do for you guys. Yeah, we're going to, you know, we're gonna, we will do that. But but the financial deal for them would have been phenomenal, and, and it had I don't know whether Saint it's because Saint John's County is a Republican county, I wouldn't put that past anybody. So we're just gonna. It's but that's where we are. I'll, I'll, I hadn't heard the door been closed, but I know if they lose the contractors off the job, they they won't be able to get them back to get it done in time. Okay. Um, we're sort of wrapping up, looking short on time. We always say if there's any other question, but we always ended up, we know we don't ask all the best questions, all the right questions, get all the questions in. So is there anything that you wanted to talk about or tell us that we didn't ask you about? I would never tell you what you could cook me up on. <laughs> no, no, this is, no. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a fun deal. Um, Obviously, I appreciate your endorsement four years ago. That certainly helped. It really helped because I had no name recognition. I, no one knew who I was. And um, now we're just going to do it, um, hopefully, for four more years and just continue to really build this thing up even far bigger than it is right now. Um, no, I don't have any magic wand on any of that stuff. But it is amazing, going back to your question on the, on the Players Club, if you get the right people in the room, and, and, uh, and I don't want to get into it because it's a whole different deal, but I was, we were just with the gate people on, on the uh, outpost. And I said, you know what? We can solve this if you get the attorneys, their attorneys and our attorneys, out of the room, we'll solve this. Thing. And we will solve it. it it's it's going to go the way the people on Neck Road want. But I told them in the in the uh, the time we made a lot of acquisitions at RPM International. As a matter of fact, 67 in 22 years. So we were buying three companies a year, which is a lot. And when it got finally down for the owner to sign, everything done to, I said every attorney out of the room. Our attorneys are out of the room. His attorneys are out of the room. We sat down and we never lost a deal. But once you get opposing attorneys going after each other that I'm smarter than your attorney, uh, it gets all screwed up. So it's amazing what you can do working with the right people uh, that can make a decision, close the door, get it done, and we're doing the same thing there in the, in the outpost property. Okay. And do know we're doing very well right now. I was going to read you my list of major accomplishments, but I won't even do that. We're, uh, we're hanging in there extremely well. And watch this thing grow. I'm telling you, watch. If I could just add one yeah. last little mm -hmm. comment, since I'm you know, down here in the St. Austin Beach area is where I live, do you have much, uh, many projects that you're working on in the St. Austin Beach area that you'd like to let those voters know about? Perhaps like the pier? Or the well, the, the pier, yeah, we've been, I'm, on, I'm on the board of the uh, uh, Tourist Development Council. That's what Rachel Bennett would be able to answer. She's yeah, really she's involved with the beaches. A, a focus point of that. So yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, she's District 5, so she's really in the day-to-day -day stuff. The only way, and I told the board this, I said, you had, talking about reserves, I said, if you're going to do the pier, you better start reserving now to be able to do that, uh, say, five years or so from now. And... Um, I'm not sure I got through to that. I said, if you don't reserve early for that, it isn't going to happen. Because uh, that pier is what, like $10 million to take it down? Yeah. I said, you had better start to reserve now to do that because the county doesn't have money for it. And, and, and the, the bed tax does a lot for everything. You know, you've got about $10 million. But there are P 
people require a lot too. They're asked a lot to do that. But that's the only, that particular project is the only way that's gonna, gonna be done. But no, as far as I know, in um, St. Augustine Beach, everybody appears. I haven't had any problems. I don't know that Rachel, she, she really has gotten right into it. I mean, she, she's, very active. Yeah, she's very active over there. Uh, I could answer, you know, I'm, I'm the same way in Ponte Vedra. I mean, I could tell you things up there, yeah, like the outpost sure. and the players club. But um, no, if, you, if you're going to do a big project, you've got to start to reserve early. It, it just isn't going to happen. It won't take place. Okay. Well, it's good to know it's on the radar and it's being discussed. Oh, yeah. No, it's been discussed. Uh, it's been probably at about two or three um, TDC meetings with reference to that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, unless Thank anybody you. has anything else. Thank you for coming in. Jim, good to see you guys. Good to see you always.